Circling back to the academic discourse on spirituality and religion, I argue that all human civilizations began at a similar level, a highly primitive state. That spirituality roughly runs parallel, the evolution of spirituality roughly runs parallel to the advancements in the material productive forces. The changes in the material level of the productive forces, such as going from a hunter-gatherer to, from a roaming hunter-gatherer society, you chase game, you go wherever, you go with the flow of nature, literally the ebbing and the flows of nature, the wet ebbing and waning of nature. Where the game goes, you follow, you go for the hunt. Um, from the, so one advancement is from hunter-gatherer to pastoral agricultural society. Uh, once you become agricultural, you become sedentary. You look for a defined land. And the first concepts of one's nation tied to a specific plot of land really begins once you start domesticating goats, sheep, plants. This sounds really vulgar and simplistic. But once you start domesticating whatever livestock, you start domesticating uh, the wild cattle, which became a sort of domesticated cattle, uh, whether that's, you know, a cattle, the history of domestication of plants and animals is literally the history of civilization. And sedentary societies are much more advanced than hunter-gatherer. Hunter-gatherer is primitive. But we want to put a disclaimer. Primitive in the educational academic sense is not some type of derogatory or racist, you know, denotation. Oh, this society is primitive as as some as as a concept of being somehow inferior. That's not the case. This is strictly in the Marxist-Leninist historiography. Actually, not Leninist. Um, in terms of historical studies. Karl Marx is absolutely the bomb. He's not necessarily right about socialism or communism, but understanding his, this framework of understanding history based on the level of the productive forces is absolutely freaking scientific. And if people don't like the, the fact that Karl Marx got it right, <laughs> they can eat it. Get lost, eat it. Um, but basically, uh, all of history, this isn't theoretical, so all this communist stuff, that a lot of that's theoretical. It doesn't mean advancements in the material productive forces leads to communism. It absolutely does mean that changes of society and beliefs over time has absolutely been predicated upon changes in the level of the productive forces from hunter-gatherer, from the agricultural sedentary society, to the, um, to the society of the windmill, to the society of the combustion engine, to the society of petroleum, coal, and nuclear fission. These are the major drivers of history. It's undeniably irrefutable. It is literally based on incidents and events in history. So if you want to be an adherent of Karl Marx, uh, you better be a historian because that the history part is absolutely dead on right as opposed to theory so in terms of religion from these hunter-gatherer societies you see the first universal primal spirituality doesn't have any concept of god at all it doesn't really have any concept of gods or goddesses it's just a veneration of the forces of nature once society becomes more complex divisions of labor then you have much more organized rituals organized ideologies and so p academics are going to vehemently different schools of anthropologists are going to vehemently disagree on religion and we'll probably throw a lot of it in description but religion i argue has to have a much more coherent has to have a formalized system of belief to be crass a religion has to be a system that answers all your questions even if completely wrong, but basically, it's a full stack system. A true religion has the answers from the beginning of time to the end of time.
Now, mind you, my belief is that science, based on the clockwork, science tells you exactly how the Earth will end. It'll end in an inferno likely engulfed by the sun. Billions of years. Billions and billions of years from now. Um, so in terms of science predicting the future, I think I think science, this is a credit to Richard Dawkins, uh, science is what I rely upon. But basically, religion, I argue that religion has to have a full stack system, so to speak. It has to be the answer it has to be the attempted answer for the beginning of time to the end of time and answer all your questions. How do I become saved? How do I realize liberation? How do I deal? Uh, basically, it's it's a much more coherent system with a coherent economy of salvation, a system of salvation, a, a coherent system of defined rituals, even with classes of lay persons and priests. Basically, think of religion as a full stack application, whereas the longings of basic primal Shinto is like an uneducated basic script that describes in texts, print, hello world, the world is fascinating, nature is fascinating, it's very primitive. So basically, there's not going to... It's impossible to have a definite answer what religion is. But in a general sense, religion is a step above a primal animism or paganism. So, for example, in history, you are loath to find anyone committing extreme acts on the basis of Shinto. You can't really insult the Shinto gods. None of the none of the cultural adherents of Shinto or Chinese folk religion are going to be mad if you insult some Shinto or folk god. This is not something. It is such a it's a primal and positively primitive thing. You're not going to have legions of adherents, basically with with pitchforks, because you defamed some Shinto deity, okay? And that's the beautiful thing about the folk religion, the primitive nature. It's animistic, it's nature-based, and it doesn't have, it doesn't purport to have the answers to everything. And I argue all of human civilization started at a similar level. Uh, his historical research have been done that suggest the first monotheistic form, form of monotheistic religion, uh, basically where the Israelites believed in Yahweh, believe or believe, believed or believe, what, whatever, whatever the technical definition, but basically whether, whether that's the belief now in history or that reflects the present day belief, but basically, there is the argument that the Israelite deity was was also once part of an ancient pantheon with a, with a chief consort, and you see this in world religion, for example, uh, with for example, Principal Mahadev, Lord Shiva, and his divine consort Parvati. And basically, uh, Bhagavati Parvati Devi, the goddess Parvati, and basically Shiva, and you have, uh, uh, we're not going to talk about Ganesh, but basically, it is argued that, if, if, for example, my theory, what happened with the monotheism is, for example, like this. Within Hinduism, folks, there is a movement that preaches basically monotheism where more or less monotheistic version of Hinduism. People are not aware of that. Uh, it, they, they don't fight with other groups. They don't fight with other groups. Sometimes they, they call certain phenomenon demigods, but basically they, or, or demons, demigods. But basically there's a group that's called uh, International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and they basically 
principally worship Krishna as the principal deity. So if within the Hindu civilization, Vedic civilization, if Hare Krishna became the dominant form, and if it changed into a manner where it jettisons every, anything to do with other divinities as demons or demigods, and, and announces to the world that there is only one God called Krishna, then you kind of get the idea of what I argue happened with the Israelite, the Canaanites, the Israelites, and the, and the different tribes related to the Hebrews and the Israelites. So basically, it, I believe, I personally believe that the Israelite God was started out as part of a pantheon. Then there was a, a nationalist movement that defined, for example, if, if you take one of the manifestations of God, Lord Krishna, and say, there is no other gods. There's no Ganesha. There's no other gods. Everyone from now on only prays Krishna. Okay, so if that happened to the Hindu civilization, then it would slowly morph into the Israelite civilization. So I think that's what happened. I'm pretty based on archaeology. They have the defined where Yahweh was worshipped alongside a consort. For example, Shiva and Parvati. The, this analogy. The point is not to denigrate religion, but to argue that monotheism, polytheism, both advanced polytheism and advanced monotheism, I argue, no matter what their beliefs in gods and goddesses may be, in the end, it stems from the natural spirituality looking up with awe at nature, looking at with awe at a massive thunderstorm. Eventually, someone imagines there's a thunder god, and there's a god of the oceans, there's a god of the lakes, there's a god of the moon, a god of the sun. Eventually, someone says, the sun god is the most powerful god, the unconquerable sun. Toss away all your false gods and only worship So Invictus. And eventually, So Invictus becomes the supreme god of everything, the universe, every nature, heaven, earth, trees, planets that there shall be nothing but so invictus. So this is where monotheism branches out of polytheism. So basically, to be coherent, primal spirituality is more like Japanese Shinto and the primal variant before that. So early primal spirituality, I argue, morphs into polytheism. All forms of monotheism sort of morphed from taking some great, one of the most powerful gods within some culture, for example, one nation might, it might not just, it, it could be one tribe worships Yahweh. The other tribe, for example, I'm just, just for sake, they worship some other divinity, El or Baal or, or some other, you know, whatsoever other divinity. So you have the, you have, for example, five tribes, each with one tribal god. One tribe conquers the other five tribes, if Judea conquers the other five tribes and declares that their, their main god is the only god, eventually there is a cohesive nation building where all the where all the next tribes learn to worship the one god. So basically, all of human spirituality originates from this primal type of spirituality, which I call primal shinto. I'm an adherent of primal shinto. Basically, it's a primitive animistic form of spirituality as opposed to religion.